On a look at nudge and grid settings in Pro Tools. It's basic stuff, but there's a lot in there, and hopefully there'll be something in here that you haven't seen before. Um, edit modes. Okay, so first off, F1, 2, 3, and 4. We have slip on F2, grid on F4. If we press F4 again, we get relative grid. So that's moving in line with the grid, but not locked to the grid. This is the equivalent of snap settings in some other DAWs. Actually, if you want to, you can cycle around those edit modes by hitting the tilde key, which does the same thing. But if you want to go straight somewhere, F2, F4 is where we're going. I'm going to stay in grid mode for now. Uh, in that case, what happens is everything we do is constrained to the grid. The grid setting is here. At the moment, I'm working in minutes and seconds, and my grid setting is 500 milliseconds, which seems like a reasonable amount. And if I make an edit selection, it'll move in chunks of 500 milliseconds. There we are. If you don't want to be constrained by that grid, then you can go to slip and you can do anything you want to, obviously. But if you're in grid, why not just on a Mac hold command or on a PC hold control, and you'll find that you can temporarily suspend grid mode. And when you release that modifier, you're back in grid mode again. You can use that with the selector tool or with the trim tool like so and here we've got that snapping to a grid and if i hold command on my mac i can suspend it talking about changing grid values probably makes more sense if you can actually see the grid so you do that by clicking on grid then you'll see grid lines appropriate to what you've got set here and if you change it you'll see that the grid value changes with it um I don't want to admit how long i'd been using pro tools for before i found out that that was why my grid lines mysteriously appeared and disappeared from time to time. We'll move swiftly on from that one. At the moment, my grid's in minutes and seconds. That's because I've got this option here checked, follow main timescale. So I've also got bars and beats selected here. If I select the bars and beats ruler, we'll see that it changes to bars and beats and vice versa. If you switch that option off, then it won't do that and you can be working in a different time base. But there we are. I've already said that you can change your grid setting from here, but actually from the keyboard, it's a much quicker way of doing it. So if you hold Control and Option on a Mac or Start and Alt on a PC, and you use your plus and minus keys on the numeric keypad, you can change them up and down like so. And with those grid lines showing, you can see exactly what's happening. And while we're there with those keystrokes, if you swap those modifiers from Control and Option or Start and Alt on a PC, to command an option or control and alt on a PC and stay with that plus and minus on the numeric keypad, then you can change nudge values instead, which introduces nudging. So what's nudging? Nudging is just moving stuff up and down by that amount you've got specified in the nudge value. I've got a whole clip selected. If I hit plus, it'll nudge along by the nudge value. If I hit minus, it'll nudge backwards by the nudge value. There is some other stuff that you can do, though. For a start, what if you don't have a numeric keypad because you're on a laptop? Well, you can do something much the same by using the period and comma keys. Actually, it's much easier just to look at the uh, uh, open and close pointy brackets. I'm not quite sure what those brackets are called. That uh, would be there if you were to press shift because that's giving you the visual indication that you're talking about nudging backwards and forwards by pressing those keys. Interestingly, if you extend that out to the keys either side, pressing M or forward slash, then you can nudge by double that nudge value, the next value up. So in this case, we've got 500 milliseconds. The next value up is one second, and that's what we find we're nudging by. But that's not all that you can nudge. Nudging's way more useful than just nudging clips up and down the timeline, although that is kind of useful. For a start, what you can do is you can add modifiers to get some really useful variations. A really nice one is if you press shift, and then use plus and minus. Instead of nudging the clip you've got selected, assuming you have a clip selected, you can nudge the selection, which is kind of possibly just as useful, if not more useful sometimes. And obviously there are some others for the other modifiers. Specifically, if you hold uh, Option or Alt on a PC and press plus and minus, you can nudge the head of your clip. If you hold Command or Control on the PC, you can nudge the tail of your clip. So by doing something like that, I can nudge both the head and the tail independently just by changing modifiers. Very useful stuff. 
Uh, one that I don't actually use very often, but it's uh, it's a bit fancy, this one, is uh, you can nudge the contents. Keep the clip boundaries the same, but you can nudge what's inside that clip backwards and forwards by the nudge amount, by holding control or start on a PC. And that's what's happening here. An aspect of nudging I can't not refer to is nudging automation. So over here in this volume automation playlist, if I nudge backwards and forwards, I can move the automation independently of the underlying audio data, which is really handy and something that I certainly find extremely useful. There's plenty more to say about nudging, but that'll do for now. Hopefully there's some stuff in there that you didn't already know.